And the word that just comes to my spirit is this. Faith thrives in the impossible. Faith thrives in the impossible. Where, where it seems to be impossible is where faith steps up to the front line. It's when we stand in a place that it can't be done in the natural is where the place where the supernatural faith of God can step up and begin to take a place in our life. And the challenge comes, the only way that's ever going to happen in your life or in my life is if we're willing to come from a place of where we are and go to a place in our walk with God where He calls us to. When we're sitting where we're at and not moving in anything of God, there's no place for faith to thrive. There's, there's going to be no situation and circumstance of the impossible and the natural in order for God to move something into the, into the present. So what we've got to have is an atmosphere where we are willing to trust God as you walk forward in your faith walk. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1, look at what the Bible says. Now the Lord had said to Abram, and the thing is there's a place of obedience. You're never going to see a faith walk of, of success take place in your life until you make a decision to leave from the place of complacency and say, I must trust God for my future. I must trust God for my purpose. I must trust God for the miracle of my life. I must trust God to use my life. I'm going to trust God to bring me to a place where I am active in his kingdom, where I can see his word produced after its own kind. I want to step into a place of activity. I want to watch God's kingdom move. I want to see the things that God has desired for me as I walk in a place of agreement with the body of Christ, as I see God fulfill, we use the word destiny, but really fulfill the purpose of your existence. God, I want to fulfill a calling. I want to know that I've been effective. And the only way for that to happen is come to a place where I'm going to trust God to go to an atmosphere or to a dimension in my spirit where I've never been before. I want to go to a place of the impossible with God's word. And it says, and this is what Abram said, this is what God said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. Get out of the place where nothing is being accomplished. It's not about leaving family and friends. It's about leaving a comfort zone here and say, Holy Spirit, I know there is something you have for my life. Even if it's right in the body of Christ, it's a walk of my trust. I want to go to a place where you thrive. I want to walk in a place where you move. And he said, because I'm going to do something to you that can never be done in the natural. Your calling is out of heaven. Your purpose in God is out of the supernatural. It's from the eternal of God's glory in order to establish his kingdom. Your purpose in life has an eternal purpose from God. And he says this, I'm going to make you a great nation, and I'm going to bless you. I will make your name great, and you shall become a blessing. And I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse them who curses you. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. God says, I'm going to do something mighty with your life. But you're going to have to make a decision. See, you cannot make something mighty come to pass in your life. Only God can make something mighty come to pass in your life. But the only way it's going to come to pass in your life is if you step into the place where God can make it happen. And that is the place of a place called obedience. So I'm going to walk from where I am. I'm going to step into the simple path of God. I am going to trust you according to your word. And the Bible says, so Abraham, so Abram, verse 4, departed. He obeyed. Somebody say obeyed. To hear God give you promises, to, to read the promises in the word of God, to see things that seem to be impossible because they are in the natural is the perfect work. This is God's word. And, and to say, God, I want to see it in my life, then God's going to have to ask you, are you willing to step out in the place and begin to trust me in the little things to go from place to place, from glory to glory, watch me move effectively in your life. But now we got to get Abraham. we got to get Abram. To the place of the impossible, that's chapter 15. This is where the impossible, this is where faith thrives. This is where faith is truly activated. Abram has come from the place of his fathers. He's begun a sojourn. He's begun to walk toward a land he's never been before in his life to a place which he's never seen before with a promise he's never heard before, but God has given it to him. And if you want to see it, then you're going to have to be where God's promise is going to be revealed. The place of faith is where, God, is where God's promises come out. It's the place of I'm going to be obedient is the place where God's promise comes to pass. So in chapter 15, 
the book of Genesis, look at how Abraham is now Abram, Abraham. We call him the same, but because eventually God's going to change his name from Abram to Abraham. But he's in the place now where he's come to where God told him to go, where all these things were going to happen. But now he's come up against the word, the impossible. Because now he's here. He's in the land, God told him. He's been walking through the land. He's been sojourning, they say, all through it. But there is nothing coming to pass in his life that would bring that promise forward. So now Abram is coming up to the place of the impossible. I don't see how it's going to happen. So often we want to logicate everything. I came here because God said he would do it, but I don't understand how he's going to do it. It's not making sense. What do I do now? So now we got to get to that place of, okay, God, I'm walking in this place of obedience. I need to see something. And God's like, it's not that I want you to see something. I want you to believe something. It's not that I want you just to see something. I want you to believe something. I want you to believe what I'm about to show you. Believe what I'm about to tell you again because Abram left because he was obedient to start the journey. Somebody say start the journey. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you know what you did? You started the journey. But the goal was you got to move all the way into the place where faith can be activated. Abram had gotten only so far. I actually, go back to chapter 12 for a little bit. And the Bible says in chapter, sorry, chapter 11 and verse 31, Abram's father had been a part of the first exodus out, and they'd only gone so far. But that's not where God wanted him to go. Halfway is not all the way. And the Bible says that when Terah had taken his son and Abram and his grandson Lot and the son-in-law and all these that went with him, and the days of Terah, 32, chapter verse 32 of chapter 11, it were 205 years, and he died. And God said again, I called you here. He had started here. God as far as here. Halfway is not there. Starting your Christian walk is one thing. Moving all the way to the place where I'm going to start believing God is where the action begins to happen. Somebody say hallelujah. I can be, I'm born again, and I can still stay in the land of comfort. I can still stay in the place of, okay, I'm saved now. I got my fire insurance. I don't want to go, I'm good. But no, the place where God wants you is over there. It's a, it's a place, it's the dimension of your heart that says, I want to be where I'm going to trust God, where God's going to produce in my life. I want to be there. So Abram gets there. He's walking all through the land. And he's come to the place of seeing that what he needs to be is not happening and doesn't know how it's going to happen. So in chapter 15, the Bible says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I am your shield. I am your great reward. But Abram said, God, what will you give me? I go childless. The heir of my house is nothing more than a servant. That's not your promise. You don't bring a nation from the servant. You bring, you told you bring a nation from me. I know how you're going to fulfill your promise. I don't see and understand what you're going to say. And Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, only one born in, my, born in my house is going to be my heir, not even mine. But behold, the word of the Lord came to him, verse 4, and said, This one shall not be your heir, but that which is going to come forth from your own body, that is going to be your heir. Now we're running into the place that's going to become the impossible. Because Abram is soon going to watch this go all the way through till he's 99 and no promise. But he's got to make a decision. In the place of the impossible, I'm willing to believe God. Somebody say, believe God. And here's where everything happens. When God gives you something, when God says something to you, and you make a decision in your spirit, I am going to believe what God said. I've got to come to a place well, I'm going to draw a line, not just in sand that can be blown away. I want to cut a line in the concrete and say this is a dead set line cut that says I'm going to move forward and this will not change. I'm going to stand my ground and believe what God said. And from that point on, 
I'm going to sojourn believing that God said something that only God can fulfill. And the Bible says, Behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, This one shall not be your heir, one that shall come from his body. And he said in verse 5, Then he brought him outside and said, Now look toward the heavens. I want you to count the stars. If you are able. And he said, So shall your descendants be. Can you imagine God taking him outside the tent? He's not showing him how. He's just showing you what it's going to be. I'm showing you the heavens. This is the size of the nations, not just from you physically, but he's showing you spiritually. All the nations on the earth shall become part of the offspring of Abram. This is impossible, but God shows him. And as Abram gazes on the stars, he lets faith into his spirit. He lets the word settle in. He didn't shut the door on it, but rather he embraced it and he believed it. I don't know how heaven is going to do it, but something surged through his being and Abram believed God. He said, I believe it. That settles it. And the Bible says, and God accredited to him for righteousness. And the establishment is set. Now turn your Bible to the book of Romans. I want you to look at chapter 4. Because we want to see the building block on this for a few minutes. Let me say building block on this. There is so much in the story. Some chapters down, God is going to say it to them again. He's going to tell them, I've already seen it done. Somebody say, I've already seen it done. See, when God says something to you about your future, it's because God's already seen your future completed. You just haven't seen it there. Remember, God's already been there. He's already seen it done. It's already been played out in heaven. And it's already prepared for your obedience. Your obedience is already seen completed. Think about it. Your obedience is already seen completed in the very hands of God. God can look at all of time like this. And he sees where you believe. And he sees where it is fulfilled. He's got everything prepared for that moment. It's not not done yet in the heart of God. It's already finished in the heart of God. You just haven't seen it. God already has. God's already seen it in you. God's already seen it. Complete. See, that's what's got to shake our spirit. The impossible becomes possible because faith thrives in the impossible. It's what pleases the heart of God. And it says in Romans chapter 4, in verse 16, because faith allows God to flow through your life in the most powerful word connected to faith, and it's called grace. Grace is a provision. Somebody say provision. Grace is all of heaven's energy moving on behalf of God's love. It's all of heaven's purpose. It's all of the kingdom of God. It's everything that applies and brings the promise to bear. Grace is everything, rushing from heaven, moving. But the thing that holds grace to hold its position is when you grab a hold of faith and you don't let go. You grab faith and grace flows because you choose to believe. Let go of faith, grace stops. So if you want God to move the impossible into a possible, you got to hold on to I believe. I believe that settles it. That declares it. Because God's already seen it. How do I know? Romans chapter 4. And verse 16 says, in order for grace, that means the free provision of God, to bring Abraham to the place where God designed him to be, there has to be the operation of grace. And for God's grace to flow into your life, because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God which means with faith it's totally possible to please God. So as long as I'm holding on the faith, I am pleasing God. 
And when God is pleased, grace flows like a river. The provision of God flows like a river. It doesn't matter what mountain is in your way. Grace is greater than every mountain and every obstacle from every ism, from any attack, from any assault. There is nothing that can stop the flow of grace only that you let go of faith. That's where the impossible becomes possible because you choose what God says. I'm going to believe. And I'm going to grab a hold of it. And no storm on earth is going to stop it. No devil in hell is going to cause me to let go. Because as long as I hold to it, I own it. And when I own it, grace is going to flow without hindrance. And that grace is greater. How do we know? Verse 16. Every promise that God gave, the promise that he gave to Abraham, that I would cause you and your descendants to be the heirs of the world, the grace, that the promise that I gave you, that which I promised you is going to come to pass because as long as you hold down to your faith in what I said and act on it, then my grace is going to plow through every obstacle and bring it to pass. He says, therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise God gave you will be sure. And to Abraham that all the seed, not only those of the law, but all those of the faith of Abraham, everyone is going to come into it. Everyone, because Abraham holds on, grace is going to keep flowing through. As it is written, verse 17, God said, I have already. Somebody say already. already. I've already. See, and God is no respecter of persons. He said to Abram, I've already, I've already made you a father of many nations. I've seen it done. Somebody say, seen it done. God says to Abraham, he says, I have made you. Not I'm going to make you. Abraham isn't yet. Yet God told him, I've already done it. It's sealed in my timeline. It's already seen out of heaven. I've already seen the fulfillment of the promise. I have it right here. He could, he could have pulled that out of eternity and pressed it right through into time and showed you the finished work. Come think about it. Think about it. Oh, 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 did you see that? He could pull it out of eternity and he could show your completed future to you for just a moment and say, see, I see it finished. And then hold it back and say, now, trust me. I've already seen it done. I already have it sealed in my timeline. It's already completed. I'm just showing it to you for just a moment. So then when I take it back, I'm putting it right back in the timeline as a completed work. Will you trust me? In the impossible, faith thrives. Now God shows you because with faith comes my grace and my grace is going to make sure this comes to pass. So confident is God about his grace to produce the future and the purpose of your life. That he already calls those things that are not as though they already exist. See, we stress and we, and we labor and we worry and we get concerned and we get beat down and we hang our heads. And yet God is saying, now wait a minute. I've already called what is not as though it is. And Abraham, the Bible says in verse 18, who contrary to what hope would say, in hope already believed so that he became the father of many nations because he knew that God had already told him he gives life to the dead and he does those things that do not exist. He calls them as though they do. It's already done. Your future is sealed in the hands of God. All you have to do, all you and I have to do, is walk it out to allow it to come to pass. Grace becomes the gift, the power gift that walks alongside righteousness. Now I want you to look at verse 20, chapter 4 of Romans. And Abram did not waver at the promise of God through any unbelief, but was strengthened, positioned in what? What does it say? In, anybody reading it? In faith but was strengthened, holding onto what God said. My faith is in what God said. Not in what I thought. Not in what I want. But my faith is in what God said. And God who cannot lie, 
and is no respecter of persons, and God who does not change his mind has held that out to you to grab a hold of your entire purpose, your future, even things you don't know of yet. God's already declared these things done and accomplished as long as you grab a hold of faith. I believe God. And then grace just roars past you into your presence, into your presence, into your circumstances, and begins to mold and shape everything in front of you to cause you to become what God has designed for your life. He did not waver at the promise to unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore it was never. He believed what God could do, the impossible becomes possible because faith thrives in the impossible. Therefore, it was accounted to him as righteousness. And we all shout glory for Abraham. But now look, it wasn't written for him alone. How many say hallelujah? hallelujah. But it was written to me. Say it was written to me. It is written to me. It is also for us, verse 24, so that it can be imputed to us who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. The one who raised Christ from the dead has now brought us to a legal place where now we can, in our lives, as Abraham did, and believe what God already showed him, trusting what was not, was declared as though it was, and now we see that it has come to pass. Everything God said has been fulfilled to Abraham, and that fulfillment was only based on one thing. Abraham believed and never let go. And because of that, the flow of grace to accomplish the task constantly flowed through and in Abram's life. So, for, notice, it was also for us, verse 24, that it can be imputed to us who believed on Jesus Christ, who was delivered up because of our sins, but was raised to bring us to a place of I am justified. Say, I'm justified. justified. Now, justified is good. We want to get us into grace, right? We want to get us to believe, Dion, okay, I'm justified, now what? God has a future in your life. He has promises for your life. So I got to get from justified to activated. I got to see everything being accomplished. I got to see the trust in God that being justified adds everything else to it. Remember, faith for Abraham was accredited to righteousness. Because he believed God, grace could now roar into his life. He could trust God to fulfill everything that he said. Notice. Therefore, verse chapter 5, having been justified by faith. Say, I'm justified. Say, I'm justified. Say, I'm justified. Say, I believe. I believe. And I'm not letting go that I believe. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my King. Jesus is my eternal life. Jesus is my future. In him is every promise that I need to accomplish the will of God for my life. And that's what God's called. Therefore, having been justified by my faith, I possess, notice we, that's me, I possess peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what that means? That means God and I can now work together in a place of agreement. I'm at peace. I'm at peace with God. When you're at peace, nation to nation, what do they do? They begin to work together. They coordinate together. They share together. They operate as one. You are now in a place of not just tolerance with God. You are in a place of peace with God. Somebody say, peace with God. I'm at peace with God. So now I want to use that peace. Somebody say, use that peace. Come on, I want to use that peace. God has a reason for that peace. Okay, notice. I have faith. And notice, let me go to verse 2, verse 1 and verse 2. I'll bring it down. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also now we, say that with an accent. I don't mean with an accent. I mean with an accent. I don't have much of an accent. That's about as far as I can go. Okay, I can only twang because I'm south of I-80. That's not even really a true south of I-80 twang. Anybody who's really a twanger knows what I'm talking about. You can really twang. You can twang a banjo with, you, with the way you talk, but I can't do that. Okay, notice, I now have access, same as Abraham, by faith into what? Grace. I have access by faith into this grace, but notice how Paul writes this, in which I am standing in, and I can now begin to rejoice 
in the future hope that God has showed me. Let me give you this as an analogy. Then we'll bring it down. I'm standing according to the word. Notice I have access to the grace just like Abraham had, right? He believed God. Here's God's promise. Abraham believed, grabbed the hold of it. Grace went to work. Flowed Abraham all the way through till he became what God said he would be, the father of many nations. That's what he is. That's what he is today. That's what he's become. The faith of Abraham is why you are born again. You believe with the same mindset as Abraham believed what God said. You believe what the gospel said. And because of that, God has made a way that you now can have access to the same grace Abraham had so God can fulfill whatever the promises he has for you because he's already seen in his timeline them already completed in your life. All you have to do is trust him and let him. Somebody say, let him. If I stand my ground, grace is going to take it. I have access to grace. But not only do I have access to the grace, but the Bible says, because I've been justified, I'm standing in grace. How many of you remember the days gone by when you had when you had whatever science in school? I'll, I'll go way back a few years. Real science, and and they had you take a dish, and they had you and they had you put colored water in the dish. Okay. Then you took a celery stalk. Remember, you cut the bottom of the celery stalk off, and a bunch of heads are going like this. And you put the celery stalk in the dish. What happened in the course of several hours? You would watch all that ink, all that color, begin to go up through the whole celery stalk, and you watched the celery stalk change colors as it absorbed all that was in the bowl. Now, you cauterize the bottom of that celery stalk. You, you seal it down. It'll sit there. It will never change. That's why you cut the bottom off, and you put it in, and what happened? It all rose up. I'm telling you, God has now so lovingly and so powerfully with the promises he has for your life, if you lit him, you are standing now because you're justified. God has placed you. I almost hopped here. God, okay, I'll do it. Okay. God placed you into grace. It's, you're in it. It's flowing. But just like that celery stalk, you have access to pull that grace. Let it flow through you and begin to change every part of your life. Let grace begin to transform you. Let grace, as you're walking through life, always standing in grace. Say, I'm never getting out of grace because I'm never going to get out of my faith. I'm going to believe God so that wherever I go, I'm standing in grace. And what I don't realize is that grace is moving through me and it's changing everything about my life. And one day, I'm going to see everything coming to pass that God promised. And those chapters bring you not just reigning in this life, but reigning all the way to eternal life because grace is that powerful. If you let it flow and flow and flow, it will bring you all the way, just like Abraham did his promise, just I will believe God right now, standing knowing grace belongs to me. And I'm going to allow that grace to flow in me and change my life forever. Give him a shout of praise in the house. Would you please jump to your feet? Get to that place of knowing that God already sees it. But you have to make the decision. All you have to do is I'm going to believe God and act on it. Abram could have believed kind of what God said, but never left where he was. And he would never have come to the place where faith would have been activated. Faith is not activated in your past. It's activated in your presence and your future when you're where God wants you to be. Faith has a purpose in your present, and that is to bring the future to pass in your life. Abe, nothing was going to change in Abraham's life until he left Ur of the Chaldees, is what it says in, what it says in chapter 11, and actually get to the land where he believed, where God wanted him to start his faith walk. He had to believe the beginning to step out of his past and step into the place God wanted, and then walk through it as long as he got in there and stayed there believing everything God said because that's where grace thrived. Faith operates aggressively in the impossible, and grace thrives as long as you hold down the faith. Make a decision today, tonight, depending on when you're watching. I'm going to step in because I want grace. I have access to all this grace. But I want grace moving. 
through every fiber of my being, changing every part of my life, and bringing me to the place that God has designed for me. I want my faith to thrive, and I want grace to be abundant, and I want to watch the promise that God has come to pass, because God's already seen it. Grace will change it. The favor of God flowing, the eternal of God, and His kingdom will literally transform you and your life, because you never let go. Grace will bring you all the way to you have the completed picture that God has. I speak that over your life, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. And God minister to you every need met as you walk your faith walk and watch grace just plow through in the radical name of Jesus. And everybody in the house says, amen and amen.